Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you two things. Number one, typical things that students get wrong. Number two, a range of things you can do with examples to get right, which I think will be really beneficial. Let's dive into a descriptive piece written about a picture like this. Here is the start of his answer. I'm going to dive into the bits in yellow to show you his mistakes. The most common mistake students make is they just put in random description which the writing doesn't need. Let's check this out with his description of the moon. The moon hung, brilliant choice of verb, halo framed, interesting, but halo suggests angelic. Has that got anything to do with this piece of writing. It doesn't refer to anything he's written before and it doesn't really refer to anything that comes afterwards. So it's just there to describe. It doesn't actually help us. What did it illuminate? The cirrocumulus clouds. Well, who cares what kind of clouds they were? If the shape of the clouds is relevant to something later, put it in. But it isn't. We're going to scrap it. Which broke up the undulating and rippling patterns. Well, is the fact that the clouds are in patterns going to be important? Will it work in some symbolic way to help us understand the character or the setting? The answer is no. We're going to ditch it. The next bit of inappropriate description is nearly genius. So he describes the sky as a mackerel sky. This is totally surprising. We kind of picture fish skin patterned in blues and greys perhaps. So we can see the sky in that colour, but it doesn't quite work because we're not certain what a mackerel looks like. It needs to work on a symbolic level. For example, if we had fish imagery elsewhere, but we don't. What we do have is what should be a coincidence, but feels forced. Later on, he's going to tell us that he went fishing for mackerel when he was a young boy. So this feels like an artificial link. Now he enters into some flashback, and tells us that he could see a lighthouse in the distance. This is the second most common problem, where you tell us something which confuses us. This sounds like the character on the bus is seeing a lighthouse in the distance now. So it just becomes confusing. We need to ditch it. The third way that description goes wrong is when you tell us something we already know. He remembered it like it was yesterday. Well, we know it's a memory, don't we? Because you put it in the past tense here. His father brought him here a long time ago. The fourth problem is cliche. Have you heard this phrase before? Like it was yesterday? I think you have, so don't use it. Another cliche. The sweet smell of rain and earth filled his nostrils. Yeah, well, we kind of know that you use your nostrils to smell, so you don't need to tell us. And also, it's a cliché. Whereas when you read a novel, writers very rarely tell you about a character's nostrils, unless there's something significant about them. Here we have quite a good simile. Frothy waves like white horses galloping towards the shore. Which is nice, it's a descriptive technique. However, it's a cliché again, we've heard this one before. And even if we haven't, it doesn't fit the mood. So this is the fifth mistake. Choosing similes or metaphors that don't actually fit with what you've just said or are going to say. So we've just had, he'd watched the roar of the waves pounding on the rocks. It's threatening. Roar gives us the idea of a predator. Now this doesn't work with the idea of horses, which are more joyful. They're not predatory and they seem happy here. They're frothy. Doesn't fit at all with what you've just said. It's only there to prove you can write an interesting simile. But if it doesn't fit the rest of your writing, it ain't interesting anymore. Now we have another fascinating simile. Heavy drops stinging the skin like some religious initiation. This didn't make sense to me at first. Because what religious initiation leads to the skin being stung? Your references have to make sense to most readers. Otherwise, they won't work. Now, what he has in mind is self-flagellation, the idea of whipping yourself, which was a Catholic tradition and still happens in some societies in the modern day. So he could have changed initiation to flagellation, which would have been a much better simile and one that we've never met before. 
to describe the effect of the rain on the skin. However, it would still have to fit the rest of the description, which is about an old man and his memories. If he blames himself for things, then the simile would fit. But actually, we don't get any feeling of blame, as you'll see, so it doesn't quite fit. Even though it's awesome, I would consider taking it out. And if you want to see how this description can be re-edited to be awesome, check out the video coming up now.